Hi, I'm Carrie from Feel Good Teaching, and today is the very best day of the week, STEM Challenge Day. We have a brand new one, Planetopia Plants, and this is part of the growing Planetopia project series in which students design for the fictional planet of Planetopia. I'll tell you all about it right after we check out the materials and the STEM Challenge cycle. This is the STEM Challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. You'll find a link to that video in the description below. In this challenge, students are going to be designing a plant that no one has ever seen before, either in reality or even in stories or myths. Students do become very attached to their designs for this challenge, so it is best to let every student design his or her own, but there are still some options if you want them to work collaboratively either in partners or groups. If working in partners, students can design different stages of the plant's life cycle or one student can take on the dominant traits of the plant, whereas the other can design for recessive traits. And if you want students to work in groups, you could have them first determine different climates or biomes of Planetopia, and then have each student in the group design something perfectly suited for each climate. There are four basic criteria for this challenge. The plants must have a way to get energy, protection from weather or climate, protection from animals either getting eaten or trampled by them, and a way to reproduce. You're gonna to wanna to encourage students to use their imagination. This is a fictional planet, so these plants don't have to operate in the same way that Earth's plants do. The constraints of the challenge are time, materials, and that the plant has features that no one has ever seen before. You might also choose to add in a size constraint so you don't end up with rather large designs like this one, especially if you teach multiple classes and you might be in a position where you need to actually display some of the designs on bulletin boards. You'll need to keep them smaller and lighter. If you want to increase the difficulty, you can have students design to a particular need or threat. For example, something to protect from leaf-eating beetles, or a flower that allows flying insects to reach it, but not crawling insects. You can also have students create cross-sections of the different parts of the plants to show them in greater detail. And if you are having students work in groups, have them create one unifying feature or adaptation for their plants, and at least one thing that makes each plant unique. To measure results, you can either have students simply say yes or no that each criterion was met, or you can ask them to provide a little bit of additional detail. And don't worry if student explanations are rather outlandish or unrealistic or very different from earth plants, because these designs are gonna serve as a foundation for making connections with plant science on earth and comparing and contrasting. As always, I have plenty of extension ideas for this challenge. You can have students create booklets or file folders about their Planetopia plants. They can include basic details like what the actual size would be, uh, the needs of the plant, special features, adaptations, life cycles, detailed field notes, genetics. Of course, then you can move right into plant science on Earth. So plant parts and their functions, plant needs, photosynthesis, ecosystems, cell biology, unusual plants and their adaptations, the many ways we use plants for building materials and medicines, and of course, pollination and plant reproduction. If you wanna tie in some ELA and some art, you can have students go on a plant walk around the school, have them take photographs or detailed field notes, carefully observing the physical properties of the plants that they see, then have them bring that back to the classroom and use it to write poetry, descriptive paragraphs, or maybe create paintings or sketches, perhaps in the style of Andy Warhol. And you can also have students conduct experiments about plants or to conduct some plant inquiry. You're ready to do Planetopia plants in your class on your own, but as always, this resource is full of goodness. You are definitely gonna wanna check it out. It's gonna save you a ton of time. This resource contains everything you need to guide your students through the Planetopia a plants challenge, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather materials, of course, but the rest has been done for you. You'll get aligned next gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the Planetopia plants materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross curricular extension suggestions. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, four page expanded room for response for younger students and a two page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find templates to make plant booklets or folders focusing on plant basics, features and adaptations, life cycles, and genetics and heredity. You'll find handouts for studying plant parts and functions, cells, photosynthesis, plant inquiry, and more, including math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and is part of the discounted Mega STEM Challenge bundle. Coming in late spring 2018, it will also be part of a new discounted Planetopia bundle. 
Digital paperless versions for use with Google Slides are coming soon. Links can be found in the description below the video. I've included additional details and video content about this resource on my blog. I have that linked below. Make sure you're following and subscribed. As always, I hope your week has been packed with feel-good teaching moments. See you next time.